Hi everyone, this is Rob Roy and welcome to the Elliott Elite U.S. Market Update. And boy, is the title of this uh, appropriate for this presentation, Elliott Elite. Let's take a look at the chart so I can explain to you why. When we put the Elliott Wave on the SPX, which remember is the cash index for the S&P 500 in the U.S., look what's happened. We've had a relabeling. We have been in an extended Wave 5, which we've talked about in the past, and now we're back into a Wave 3. So what happens? What causes that? Why does Elliott Wave relabel? I used to hear that a lot uh, in seminars, and it has to be um, an ever-changing a fluid type of a software program when you have changing variables in the market if you have a static program that's not flexible and not uh, moving with the market then you're going to find out that you're going to be wrong an awful lot so you have to be able to move in conjunction with the market so um, we did relabel to a wave three why well first of all you can see very clearly that we've had a pretty vertical move in the market. Now the market can make vertical moves that are strong or not so strong. We all know that a wave three is the strongest of all of the Elliott wave waves. So if it's going to relabel to a wave three already, you probably know that it must be a pretty strong move. So let's go to the SPY where we can bring in volume uh, and, and take a look at that because remember there's never any substitute for, for price to volume action. Uh, so let's take a look at volume and you can see that we have had quite a bit of above average volume which is pretty amazing for the holiday season usually the uh, especially the period of time between Christmas and New Year's is a uh, much lower volume area and remember a couple of those were were half trading days so uh, when we look at the fact that we've had all this above average volume that tells you one thing uh, about the fact that the move was strong and then what I like to do is LA Wave is by far to me the most accurate of any all of any of the technical indicators that exist, but you always make a technical trading system stronger when you accent it with other indicators, creating a trading system, if you will. So LA Wave is the lead uh, indicator, and then I back it up with other ones, and one of my favorites is the DMI. So you look at the DMI and you see this black line. Within the DMI, there are three pieces. The ADX, which is the black line, the positive directional indicator, which is the green, and the negative directional indicator, which is the red. So we see two things here. One, we see great separation between the positive and negative directional indicators. That's an indication of strength of the move. And then the fact that the ADX is curling up uh, between the two directional indicators is also. We'll talk more about these indicators and the systems as we go through uh, these uh, recordings and education uh, moving forward. But right now, basically what I'm trying to share with you is that volume is backing this up and this indicator, the DMI, is also saying this is a strong move, hence the fact that the Elliott Wave relabeled to a Wave 3. So what does that tell us? Does it tell us that the market is going to continue higher? Well, it could continue higher from here, couldn't it? Or could we then go into our Wave 4 correction and then have a Wave 5? We all know that the Wave 5 is nowhere near as strong as a Wave 3. So this part of the move has been very strong. Why? Well, there's a lot of reasons uh, that the market is continuing to power higher. One of the things that's been announced through all the financial networks is the fact that with the new tax plan, with the tax cuts that corporations are going to receive in the U.S., they're passing out bonuses. So it, it almost seems like daily some company is announcing that they're going to be giving their employees a bonus. Well, as humans, <laughs> what do we do with those bonuses? Do we put them in savings and say, hey, yeah, we're going to put that money away for a rainy day? No, we view it as found money, money we weren't expecting to get. We base our uh, budgets off of our uh, known income, and then when we get something extra, we tend to go out and spend it. Well, what does that do to the economy? So if you have millions of people that are getting bonuses, money they weren't expecting, and then they go out and spend that, that spurs the economy, that keeps the economy growing, and what does the market follow? The market follows the economy. I shouldn't say it follows it, it leads the economy, but the, the market looks ahead, but knowing that this is going to happen, Money moves back into the market, and we continue to power higher. It's just one of the issues that's going on. Another one is lower regulations. It, to a CEO that's been on any financial network, they are commenting about how 
much easier it is to do business now with the relaxed regulations. The more red tape that you tie around these corporations, the harder it is for them to do business. So when you relax the regulations, then it's easier for them to do business and make money. They make money, profits go up, the market goes up. It's all tied hand in hand. So um, pretty interesting what's going on in the market. And those are some reasons behind it. Taking a look at the chart of the VIX, we've talked about this before, that we would likely just kind of flounder around the bottom of the uh, trading range down there around 910 uh, over this period of time for the holidays. We've done that. We'll see what happens as we move deeper into January now uh, and see if we start to gain a little bit more volatility. At some point, the market will correct. I don't know when, nobody knows when, but we will have a correction. And now we can see that the correction is going to be a wave four. It's not going to be a collapse of the market, barring a black swan or any unexpected event. However, from the normal course of the market uh, via Elliott Wave, we'll have our wave four correction and then likely go up and make new highs, possibly later in the year. But one thing I can tell you, I don't believe, in my opinion, that we're just going to continue at this type of a clip. We're moving too vertical. Vertical moves don't last forever. And quite often, when you have a very vertical move, it gets retraced. And that's what the Wave 4 is all about. Uh, looking at uh, some of the charts that we've shown for case studies, look at Google. we we'll put the Ellie Wave on here. Is that not amazing or what? Look at where the Wave 5 is on this a projection of Google right where we put our butterfly and by the way we did exit that butterfly for the alerts that we sent out to our subscribers for just under a 250 percent gain and notice where it found a little bit of resistance and consolidated right smack on the wave five dead on if there's anybody listening to this recording that doesn't have their profit source or integrated investor current if they haven't renewed their uh, data feed if they're not currently using this and updating it what the hell are you waiting for you just would have had a uh, a position there that would have paid for two or three years of your data feed it, it's the most amazing now you have to understand how to to use it properly but it's the most amazing technical tool and there's nothing else out there that does this the way uh, profit source and integrated investor do as far as the Elliott Wave forecasting. So use that, find your set, favorite set of indicators to uh, confirm signals as I do, and then that's how you become a uh, an accomplished and successful trader. Now look where we are with Google now. We're right at the top of the range, so that could be another point of resistance. But another thing to be aware of is if Google does blow out of this, it's another reason why when you're putting on a butterfly, if you are fortunate enough to hit the midpoint of the butterfly, which remember you don't have to to make money because we're using out of the money butterflies, all we have to do is be right directionally to make money. We make a lot more money if we do hit the midpoint, but don't get greedy knowing that a butterfly uh, is time decay friendly and that if we stay in this range longer then we tend to make more money as we get closer to expiration. Don't be greedy like that because if we blow out of the top end then uh, all of a sudden the butterfly goes from a tremendous gain to back to being uh, worthless or a loss. So just be happy. We exited this. We didn't wait for this consolidation. We got to our target. We got out. And we made a wonderful profit on this position. So again some uh, cues there for you as far as your own personal trading don't get greedy if you uh, are happy with your profit at any point in time never anything wrong with taking a profit if you wait to see if we actually do hit the midpoint great that will be a, a larger gain you have to make those decisions for yourself with your own risk management but once you get there exit the position don't wait don't get greedy from that point on looking at uh, Altria we are in our own. Now, remember, we talked about this one as well, that we had two potential ways to generate a gain out of this butterfly if the wave three had continued, which it didn't, and we had a doji. So now we're in our wave four, and then we're waiting for the move back to the upside. And once that occurs, that butterfly will do extremely well also. So I'm just not moving quite as fast as the Google trade did, but that's because Altria was in a wave three where Google was already in its wave five. And then also looking, check this one out with STZ, some more things to look at uh, with our uh, uh, technical analysis tools here. 
put Elliott Wave on here and you can see there's the Wave 5. Let's condense it because I want to show you how amazing again that this is if we use our Elliott extension tool, Fibonacci extension, measuring that 3 and look what happened. So we talked about this before that we had this Wave 5, we consolidated around the 100% level, we continued up, the likely next target will be at this 161.8% level, but we just came back down and we're testing this area again. Once again, look at the consolidation here at the 100% ex extension level. So Elliott Wave and Fibonacci working in conjunction again and giving just amazing uh, examples of support and resistance lines, which helps you to make decisions with the positions and the trades that you put on. So if we stay here, great, and move back to the upside, then a butterfly will do extremely well. Now there is a possibility that we break below this and we come down and fill this gap and test the 61.8 percent level if that incurs or if that occurs I should say we will close this butterfly wait for that to happen and then re-enter a new one and possibly layer some butterflies you can actually do that as well when you start to get really good at this is you might put you know a butterfly here on the bounce and then another one up here because they're so inexpensive to put on and maybe another one up here and have a series of them. When you place an out-of-the-money butterfly, they're so very inexpensive, and then if you have a, a position where you think you're going to continue, whether it's to the upside or the downside, you can layer butterflies uh, for you know same amount of money that you might put into uh, a vertical spread or, or buying options outright. You could have several butterflies and give yourself multiple opportunities uh, to generate gains out of the exact same move. So for uh, me personally, I will be watching to see if this 216 or so level holds the 100% extension. If it does, great, the current butterfly is perfect. If it breaks that and heads down here, again, close that butterfly and wait for it to reach here, fill that gap, and then bounce back to the upside. Now that gap will close at some point in time, or get closed, but we don't know when. There's never any rhyme or reason as to when a gap gets filled. They just get filled. Now, last thing that I wanted to bring up is, again, talking about the market and the, the power that the markets had, the vertical nature of the move, and going back with our, uh, our sentiment indicator, the VIX. You know, the other one that we look at, we've talked about in these recordings, is uh, the Investor's Intelligence Survey of Bulls versus Bears. Currently, the bulls are at 64.4%, which is extremely high. It's not the highest reading there's ever been, but it's very high, which is telling you that everybody is bullish right now. And as soon as you know that everybody is viewing the market one way, that's when you need to become extremely cautious. But the, uh, the very significant thing is the bears are down to 13.5. Now, again, this isn't the highest reading of bullishness ever, but it is the greatest spread between bulls and bears that there's ever been. In other words, between the 64.4 on the bulls and the 13.5 on the bears, uh, we've never had a spread that wide before. So we are in extreme levels of bullishness. We will get a correction at some point in time. Just be on the lookout, be careful, but hey, enjoy this market while we're continuing to move to the upside and we'll make money when the correction comes as well. That's the beauty of trading options. You can make money to the upside or the downside and you're armed with the greatest tools that exist in the marketplace, in my opinion, with Profit Source, Integrated Investor, with all the things that they do in addition to focusing on Elliott Wave. Do this. Get your subscription current if you haven't already and follow along with us and uh, let's make 2018 an extremely profitable year. Again, I hope you had a wonderful holiday season. We've got an extended weekend here in the U.S. Monday, the market will be closed as well. In addition to, Mar or uh, in observance, I should say, of Martin Luther King's uh, day. And then we will uh, resume trading on Tuesday. And I'll be back to talk to you again next week to tell you how the balance of the trading week went. Take care, everybody.